Hi and welcome to another episode of Reaper TV. In this video I'm going to take you through another one of those tools that you may not be aware of that really can help speed up the process of working with Reaper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through how we can work with grouping. I'm going to show you quite a few different methods we can use that for and a couple of little tricks you may not think of. So let's check all that out right now. Okay, so what sort of things can we do with groups? Well, let's take a little look at some basic examples. Let's just say, for example, I want to take all my guitar tracks and I want to link them together to do something. I can select them. I can right click on any of those and I can come down to track grouping parameters or I can do shift and G to bring up the same dialog box. And then we get this. And what we can do is let's just say, for example, I want to link the volume together. And we'll say we'll go for the mute and the solo as well on all those. So let's just click on close. Now you can see we get this little red check marks in the corner of each of those. The one on the left hand side says it's a master, the one on the right hand side says it's a slave. So now if we solo this, we'll solo all the tracks. If we do the mute, we mute all the tracks. If we do the volume, you can see we do all those tracks. Now we could quite easily do exactly the same thing with just sort of using folders. And we could, it's exactly the same kind of thing but we do have more control when we're working with grouping. So let's just get rid of that a second. Let's come back down and go to the grouping parameters and we'll just uncheck everything. So we say none and we'll just close. So that gets rid of those little check marks in the corner now so we know that nothing is being grouped on there. Now let's just say, for example, that I wanted to do something like, I wanted to control the volume. And let's just say in this example that if I increase the volume on one track, I wanted to decrease the volume by an equal amount on the second track. Well, I could do it manually and that would be okay. But let's just say I don't want to do it like that. So let's just set these to parity. So we've got to set to zero. So I'm going to select the first track and do shift and G and I'm going to set this to be the master. So what I'm going to do is say that this is the volume master and then I just can click on close. You can see that now puts a little red check mark in the left hand corner telling that that's a master track. So now if we come down to the next track and we do the same thing again, so I'll just come down right click or do shift and G, bring the same thing up. Now this time we're going to do the opposite. We're going to say we want this to be a slave. So we're going to say a volume slave. As soon as we do that, we get the little red check mark denoting now that's a slave track. But what we're going to do is we're going to say reverse volume. And that's now linked the two together, but it'll do the opposites. So in other words, if I close that down, if I come to the master track and I just decrease the volume, keep an eye on the volume on the slave track, and you'll see that now increases. And if I do the same in reverse, so you can see 11.1 minus 11.1. .1. So they are perfectly linked. And wherever I increase the one by the master track, the opposite will be decreased by that amount, the, pair, uh, the slave track and vice versa. So that's already pretty cool. Now we could take that one step further if we wanted to. Let's just go back to the parent, the master, I should say, do shift and G. And let's just say we're going to use the pan on this and we're going to say, that's okay, that's fine. Close that down, shift and G on the slave track, set this to be pan slave and say reverse pan. So we just close that down. And now if I adjust the pan on there, you'll see they go the complete opposites. So as I take the master over to the right hand side you can see that the slave track goes over to the left hand side and again we've got the little check marks denoted in the top left and top right hand corners of the parent and the, and the, the, the slave so that's pretty cool and like i said that's something you couldn't do just by using the folder structure in reaper so let's just go in and right click and we just open up the parameters again now one of the nice things we can do with this is we can name these groups as well so where we've got group one at the top you can say rename that and we'll just say guitar Panning, for example, click OK. We've now got a group and you can see we can just check that and take a look in there. Now we can also check out exactly what's going on if we've got a more complicated sort of structure with all of these groupings. If we just go to view and we come down and we say we want the routing matrix or we could do Alt and R. You'll see now bring up the routing matrix and we can see exactly what's going on there. And that's the routing, which is fine. But if we click on the arrow at the side, you can see we've now got grouping. We click on that, you can now see all of the groups that are available, all the different groups we've got. So obviously we're only using 
group one which is now set to be guitar panning and all the rest are disabled but you can see they're all there so we can see exactly what's going on so if we take a look you can see we've got all the track names down the left hand side and we've got all the different parameters that they can have associated with them on the top you can see we've got m for master s for slave and you can see any of the other sort of settings we've got the reverse and so on and you can see we can very quickly easily see what's going on there and we can just enable and disable that quite quick and easy so we've got a very quick visual way of doing this if we don't want to go to the time and effort of opening up that dialog box each and every time we could use this to quickly assign uh, masters and slaves and all the different parameters that go with it or we could use it to clear them very quickly so like i say that's alt and r to show and hide that and we can cycle through it with Alt and R again. And if we want to get rid of that, we just go to View and we'll just uncheck that. So it just closes this down and we'll just get rid of that. Okay, so there's the basics of dealing with that side of things. But there's something else I want to show you that I think is pretty cool and a great way of being able to use this. So let's just clear all the things we've got on there. So let's just select those two and we'll just clear everything on there and we'll clear everything there and we'll just click on Close. So we've now got rid of any kind of thing on there, any kind of groupings going on. Now then, let's just say you're working with a project and you've done all your mixing and you've gone through, you've got your levels, but you still like to have control of, of the sort of the parent tracks, the folder tracks. You could do that and you could use that the mixer to do that. And if we take a look, you can see I've got things laid out so you can visually and easily see what's going on. But the problem you've got is you've still got to scroll through all these things to find what you want. And this is a relatively small project. If you've got something that may have 100, 150 tracks, which is quite easy, especially if you're dealing with orchestral kind of arrangements, it can get kind of unwieldy. So one of the quick and easy ways of dealing with this is we can come up and we can just add a couple of extra tracks right at the top, right at the beginning. So let's just go up, insert a track, so we'll just hit Control command t insert a new track, just take that up to the top, and we'll just call this one Guitars, for example. Okay, so we've now set that up, and you can see we've now got a track, and I could do the same thing for the drums and so on. And as you can see, I've gone through and I've done some mixing, so the levels have, have sort of all been adjusted, which is exactly as you'd expect it to be. Now then, we can set things up a little different. So if we go and do Shift and G on this, and we'll say we want this to be the master, and we want to use this to control everything. So the volume, the pan, the width, all of those different parameters, and we'll click on close. So we've set that up now, and you can see you've got check marks in front of all of these different items. Now, if we come down and we go and select all the guitar tracks, now I'm not going to deal with the parent folder on this, I'm just going to deal with the individual guitar tracks. And I'm going to do the same again, Shift and G. I'm going to set this to be slave you can see that now highlights all of those guitar panning so we're still in the same folder get rid of any reverse pans or anything like that on there i just want this to be controlling everything so now we click on close and now if i come up to this and i adjust the volume for example if you take a look at the guitars and let's just set these we'll just we've got those a different sort of level so we've adjusted all the levels on there we've adjusted each individual piece we've got the mix the way we want we just want to control the overall volume of it for example You'll see now as I adjust the volume on there, it automatically adjusts all of those ones. So this is a much better way of being able to control this kind of thing. And same with the mute, same with the solo. If I want to record arm all of those, I could do that at the same time. I could deal with the IO on there. I can deal with the phase. All those different options are available. But now I could easily set up multiple different tracks at the top of my session, and I can have all those different elements going in there, and I can control them in a more advanced way than I can do when I'm dealing with just parent folders. So like I say, it keeps the relationship between all the, the faders in relation, and I just control the overall mix of all of those pieces inside my composition. I kind of hope that makes sense in what I'm talking about there. But that's a kind of down and dirty way of working with the grouping options inside Reaper. Now there's lots of things you can do with this, and I'm sure you could find a million different ways that you could use them in your projects. But I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and if you've got any comments, questions, or feedback, pop those in the comment section below. I try to read everything you post and answer as many questions as possible. And until next time, happy mixing.